Members on both sides, members on my left. The member for Warringah. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Can members on my left. <laughs> members on my left. Members on my left. The member for McEwen. Member for Grindler. The member for Warringah. Um, can the Prime Minister confirm that the Queensland Government intends to abolish the Family Responsibilities Commission? Uh, can the Prime Minister uh, tell the House the impact this will have on the communities of Cape York, where these commissions have done so much to improve school attendance and improve family cohesion? What is the Government going to do to ensure that these communities once more have their right to take responsibility restored? Yeah. The Prime Minister has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and I thank the member for Warringah for his question and his career-long commitment to ensuring that Indigenous Australians can realise their full potential and his support for policies that have always ensured that communities can have their sovereignty in dealing with the many challenges that they face. The Queensland Government's unilateral decision to close down the Families Responsibilities Commission is deeply troubling, Mr Speaker. It is deeply, deeply troubling. The Member Cape for York Isaacs Institute can leave under 94, and the right? people of Cape York welfare reform communities of Arakoon, Cohen, Hopevale, Mossman Gorge have been at the cutting edge of addressing welfare dependency and school attendance in this country. And I commend all of those who have been part of that community-led approach. The Family Responsibilities Commission is a model centred on the community that supported the restoration of the local Indigenous authority. The FRC is acknowledged as the most critical component Mr. Speaker, of the CYWR, and the FRC conferences encourage individuals and families to engage in positive behaviours whilst promoting the interests, rights and well-being of children and vulnerable community members. The positive impact on communities has been driven by the excellent work of the local commissioners. Taking such a strong stance against antisocial behaviour has been a very challenging and demanding commitment for these leaders. However, they have stuck fast to their vision of strong communities and that are free from the welfare trap. We should also commend them for the amazing work and their resilience. The profound damage arising from the Queensland Labor government's decision to not reappoint commissioners or continue to fund and support the Families Responsibility Commission will end over 10 years of critical work that has been improving the lives of Indigenous Australians in these communities. Minister Scullion has written to the, uh, the Treasurer of Queensland urging her to reconsider what I would describe as a foolhardy decision to abandon the Families Responsibility Commission. He has repeatedly and indicated the Commonwealth Government's support for the FRC. It is the most critical component underpinning the Cape York welfare reform agenda. We have been unable Mr. Speaker, to commit further funding to the FRC while the Queensland Government, whose legislation the FRC is established under, was not clear whether the FRC would continue. We wanted to invest more in these communities, Mr. Speaker. We wanted to support more of these kids to get into school. We wanted to support local Indigenous community leaders to continue to get in their communities and set the standards so they could lift their Member own Barton. people and take them forward, Mr Speaker. That's how we believe social welfare policy should be implemented on the ground, in partnership with communities and not making, mis not making excuses, Mr Speaker, when it comes to the things that have to be done in these communities. So I have strongly supported and do strongly support the Families Responsibility the Commission, Prime and Minister's I would urge the Queensland Government to reconsider. Prime Minister. Members on both sides, I'm trying to address the House. I present the Auditor General's Performance Audit Report number 13 of 2018-19 entitled Disability Support Pension Follow on Audit Department of Human Services, Department of Social Services. The Leader of the House with Papers.
Mr Speaker, documents are tabled in accordance with the list circulated to honourable members earlier today. Full details of the documents will be recorded in the votes and proceedings. I thank the Leader of the House. For those members leaving, I'm about to call on the matter of public importance.